Salut tout le monde and welcome to my apartment. Starting off strong with the front door, this is where I exit and then enter. And I do feel like I get a ton of questions on the embroidered bag hanging by the hooks. So this is something I bought at a shop that was right next to my old apartment in Paris. I don't know what it's called. In this shot, you can obviously see a little bit of the kitchen, but we're actually going to ignore that and instead go to the left where you see this mysterious, mysterious curtain and also a lamp that I never use. So what is behind the curtain, you ask? I would love to show you. It is my very own mini closet. So this is where I hang my jackets, my dresses, my raincoat. And then behind all of that, I also have a lot of storage for my shoes, which I clearly am getting a lot of use out of. Now moving into the bedroom, this is where I spend the majority of my time plopping down, contemplating life, contemplating life some more, watching Netflix, writing, reading, noticing that my zipper has been down, hydrating, and having my very own pop punk concert. So while I'm channeling all my teenage angst, I may as well tell you that this apartment came fully furnished and kind of see that under the first bed, there is another mattress. This mattress is on its own bed frame, which pulls out and then pops up into its own bed. So now that my concert is coming to a close, I do want to show you the view that I have from my bed. What up? If you follow my Instagram, you've seen this view a hundred times. I've been here for five months and I'm still not over this view. Now, if we circle back a bit and go over to the kitchen, you'll see that it's pretty standard. So starting with, I guess, the lower layer, we've got a little cabinet thing that opens up to the garbage and the recycling because we care about the earth, a little drawer for all the Tupperware, a mini fridge with one sole magnet. This is from my favorite bagel shop in New York City when I was living there. And this is the fridge. I will say the day that I'm filming this is a grocery store day. So if it looks a bit empty, that's why. I also have a freezer up top and then right above the fridge, I do have a cutting board that slides right out. Other than that, we've got some hot plates, a toaster, a sink, a little spice rack that hangs out out on the wall which I think is super cute and then we've got another cabinet filled with a microwave and some other dishes that once again I did not have to pay for they were already here when I moved in over to the right the last cabinet has just got some other things for cooking it's got my little blender and some wine glasses and on the very top there's some more storage where I just place things that I don't really ever use you will notice that there is no oven here and I will talk about that a little later in the video now heading to the right of the kitchen we have these mysterious double doors with a little postcard sort of thing from Barcelona it's from a previous tenant so I just haven't moved it when you open the mysterious doors what do you find my very own bathroom. So the bathroom is the smallest part of this whole apartment, but it gets the job done. We've got a shower that's a bit elevated from the floor. We've got a standard sink, and there really isn't much storage space in the bathroom, which is why I just use this little cart for everything that I would need. All of my nightly routine things, some toilet paper, some stuff for the laundry, etc. And just to the right, we've got our toilet. Honestly, this is a gem. It has not given me any issues to date. And finally, we've got the holding area for some toothbrushes and my very, very old retainer. On top of my very own washing machine. So I do not have a dryer but I feel like I don't really need one and you'll see why in a second. Ta-da! So here, blocking another view of Sacré-Cœur from my second window is my little sock carousel. Directly beneath there is a bigger drying rack where obviously I put my other clothes, and under that is one of three fans that I have in this apartment. So here's the view of Sacré-Cœur from the second window, it's basically the same. And under this window, behind the drying rack, there's some shelving that actually runs along the length of the whole back wall. This is really where the majority of the storage in this apartment comes into play, and then I've also got my suitcase, which I fill with winter clothes that I'm not using, just to keep things out of the way. Now as we carry on, you're going to be looking at not only my kitchen table, but also my work desk. I definitely could have made this more aesthetically pleasing, but as Michi Torres once famously said, this is real, this is me. Here's a little painting that I absolutely love and I use it to hide my keys and some highlighters and just other stuff that I might need. And I did say that it was grocery day, so this is my sticky note grocery list in Franglais. Got lots of used and unused candles, as well as a little Eiffel Tower trinket on top of one of them. This was actually on my original keychain that my landlady gave me. And built into this table, there are a couple of drawers. Now this is not pretty, but it is functional and that's what matters. The second drawer really is just stuff that I kind of found around the apartment that I didn't know where to put in addition to some birthday number candles. And finally, my I'm a teacher but that doesn't mean I have my life together drawer. You'll also notice some tied to go markers in there as well. Now under this table, we use these little drawers first for a pantry because there's really just nowhere else to put this stuff in the actual kitchen area. And then also just a drawer of random clothes and sheets that I'm not using right now. To the right, we've got a bag filled with more bags to use for recycling on top of a box of roller skates that I have yet to use. And then you can just see that the shelves do extend and all the way across the apartment. Please do ignore the wires from the second van and the vacuum cleaner. So now surrounding the table, we've got an assortment of chairs. The first one is my grandma chair. The second one is my clean clothes chair. And the third one is these clothes are too dirty to go with my clean clothes, but not dirty enough to go in the laundry pile. And then the last thing above this table are a couple of lights. I usually only use these lights to fill up the apartment. So that works really well. And that 
is my table. Now directly to the right, this is probably, at least visually speaking, my favorite part of the apartment. First we've got some more drawers where I actually put the rest of my clothes and a dirty pile hanging out to the left. And then on top we've basically just got a ton of books, notebooks, a journal, some Vaseline, extra set of glasses, etc. And to the right I have some wicker baskets which I basically fill with socks and electronics. The combination kind of sounds strange but it weirdly works really well. Now inching our way back up, I've got some pieces of artwork, some postcards, a couple of metro tickets that I used on the very first day that I got to Paris, and a birthday card for my best friend from home. Moving on up, this is where things get <laughs> eccentric, cluttered, whatever you want to call it. Basically more books, a teapot with fake plants, some things from prior tenants, some gifts from friends, some tickets, keepsakes, more books, love letters, and one of my most prized possessions. This photo is actually of my grandparents, may they rest in peace, and I put them here specifically so that they could have the best view in the house, and then in front of them is a little bottle, not of holy water, but it's like something like it, yeah. <laughs> and the top shelf is a bit more bare, but that's because I don't ever see it and I can't really reach it that well. But yeah, we've got a couple more things up there. The flowers are definitely, definitely fake. So yeah, this is my little apartment studio, former Chambre de Bonne. And now I want to talk to you a little bit more about the logistics of the apartment. So technically the space is either 13 or 15 square meters. I forget how big it is and I don't feel like looking it up. The square meters doesn't actually include the bathroom and I've actually found that to be quite livable. I don't think that this would work for two people. Um, Just for the fact of like having two people means the pullout bed comes out so there's less space and then also not enough storage space for two people. Other than that though I really do enjoy my cozy little corner of Paris. The rent, so okay we gotta do a little bit of math. The base is 750 euros and then on top of that my landlady already had um like wi-fi set up here so that's an additional 30 euros and then also I have like the the chauche, sometimes you'll see chauche comprise when you're looking like at an apartment, they are not comprise here. So that means that I have to pay according to how much heat and water that I use. It turns out that the lowest I've ever paid was 12 euros and 50 centimes, which is really funny to me because that was actually, I think I want to say in February or March during the winter month. And the reason why that was so low is because I refused. I've never turned on the heat here. I moved here in February and I've never turned on the heat. Anyway, the most that I've paid so far is 29 euros, and that has actually been at some point over the summer, so I really think it has to do with me running the fans a lot longer and then also taking more showers throughout the day. So yeah, if we add that up, it's like a little bit over 800 euros a month. And honestly, if it wasn't for the view, I would say that that's probably too much for the space and what's included here, but because of the gorgeous, gorgeous view of the gorgeous, gorgeous Sacré-Cœur, I understand why it is this price. And on top of that, I actually don't pay a little over 800. What I end up paying is a little over 600 because I'm eligible for GAF. If you're not sure what GAF is, it's an organization, pretty sure it's funded by the government or part of the government, and depending on how much you make each month and how much your rent is, they can help you out. Essentially, they put money into your bank account to help you with these expenses. So that has really been incredible. I will talk more about GAF in next week's video because I'm going to do some updated apartment tips. I'm going to talk about how I actually found this place and I will be talking more about GAF. But for now, I'll just say that paying a little over 600 for this place if I could make this apartment an ideal one, I would have an oven. So I'm actually thinking of investing in a toaster oven. I guess it kind of depends on how much longer I plan on staying here. So I got to figure that out. But um, ovens like honestly aren't even really that normal, I would say, in Parisian apartments, especially small ones. I would have a little balcony so I could enjoy Sacré-Cœur outside. I mean, technically I do, like there is a ladder that leads to the roof, which has an amazing view of Sacré-Cœur, but it's very high up. The roof is very narrow and I just feel like I'm going to get blown away. So I don't really go up there too often. So I wish I had my own balcony and, well, of course I wish that there was AC, but that's, I mean, it's Paris. So <laughs> probably not going to see that in any of my apartments here. So the last thing that I'll say before I forget is just if you've gotten any value out of this video, please do give it a thumbs up. You probably already know the drill, but it helps spread the video to as many people as possible. Thank you very much. And I think that's everything for the apartment tour. Bisous.